Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the WGLNA. We're halfway through the night as we have two more matches. I'm Joshua Gray, joined as always by my battle buddy, Randall Holcomb. Uh, Randall, we have seen some significant plays so far from some of the veterans, some intriguing strategies coming from uh, the newer players, but uh, we still have two more matches tonight where we're going to see... Um, well, timed out, still considered a new team, but so is Penguin Mafia as yeah. well. And Simple Tankers is kind of coming back. They're veterans, sure. but it seems like this might be a different season for them. So I'm not going to hold them to a lot of what they used to do. Of course, yeah. yeah. But they still got Jay Smooth. Of course. <laughs> still got Jay Smooth. As always, please follow us on Twitter at WGLNA, Facebook.com slash WGLNA, and use that hashtag WGLNA so we can find your tweets and put them up on the broadcast. All right, and don't forget about the social media question of the day. Why is your favorite team going to be seeing us at our finals in San Francisco? Yep, that's going to happen at the Folsom Street Foundry March 15th. More information will be released on our channels here pretty soon. But you definitely want to put that on your calendar because we're going to have a lot of fun. I, I'm pretty sure we're going to have some prizes as well. Of course. Uh, we had prizes for people that showed up to the last one. And, of course, it's San Francisco, which is tons of fun. It's a great city. It really was a good really time. Is, really is. Um we're going to get into the face-off in just a little bit here, but the background of Simple Tankers joining us oh, from the very beginning, oh, from yeah. what I can remember, mm -hmm. and they have had their ups and downs. They join us at a number of the finals, but yeah. unfortunately, they got kicked out of the league. Uh, they didn't do anything wrong, just that they were at the bottom of their, yeah, of they, their division. They had a really rough season last yeah. time. It was not that successful. They gave just about everyone they played the best match that they'd had all season, the closest one absolutely crazy just super hype you know i was losing it every time i watched simple tankers play yep. but in the end they'd always lose and it was just so disappointing to see but god the well, having them back is good but i don't want to see that again i don't yeah. want them to put me through watching them perform incredibly in some matches just doing all the right things making the perfect moves and then just losing it right in the end just kind of dropping it or trying to go through that roller coaster of Come on, Sip. <laughs> yeah. we, we believe. We believe, Simple Tankers. And then, because they were going up against yeah. Simp, and they got really close to defeating uh, Simp Main, as, as they're called. But Simple Tankers, Simp, uh, Simply Irresistible. The majority of all the members of those teams are part of the Simp clan. Simply Irresistible has a number of people that are not. They're, from, uh, they're spread around. Part but of Simp, but they uh, will Simp assimilate clan. one of these days. Sure, sure. Um, they had Bobby, who had been uh, a, a member of Simply Irresistible since they had started, but had joined. It's the Simp Clan um, yeah. in between, I think, qualifier one and qualifier number two. I believe the face-off is ready between our two teams. It's Simple Tankers and Timed Out. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey, welcome back. All right. Hi. Good to have you back, Jay Smooth. Let's start with you, Jay Smooth. Talk to me, Goose. What's it like to be back in the Gold League? Hey, we never went anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Did the season go by without Simple Tankers? No, it no. didn't. No. no. It didn't. It didn't. What has your team been up to to prepare for 7x54? Oh, we've been excited. We, uh, we feel this plays directly into our play style. Um, the old format, we felt we are always the aggressor. Um, the one thing you didn't see a lot of simple tankers doing was drying out games. And if they did dry out, it was with one or two tanks left and usually the other team running. So uh, this, is, this is our format. Um, we like to be aggressive, you know, we like to move. So this is this is good for us. So do you think you guys are going to perform better through these longer series? Because, uh, and I'll back this up with, in the past season, we'd see you guys perform so well. There would be battles where it would be, holy cow, Simple Tankers is amazing. And then there would be other battles where I was, wouldn't know what's going on. And then in the very end, that match we needed you guys to be awesome, you, you kind of wouldn't almost every time. What... What are you guys doing to change that late game? Yeah, it's uh, our strats were so f on the line with the aggressiveness. If we messed up, it cost us. So our strats were almost all or nothing a little bit, and it would bite us. So uh, we uh, grabbed some players. Unfortunately, we had lost some players. Uh, in fact, keep more in, uh, in your prayers. She's still battling health issues. But uh, we've just been putting in the practice. And I have to say, it's been mostly tofu and wall hacks because I just got done with my football season. I haven't been around at all. So those guys are the guys uh, running the show now. I guess I'm just the pretty face on the team. <laughs> well, it's always good to hear from you, Jay Smooth, and we do 
wish Mornblade and his family all the best. Let's check in with your opponent, Raul, from timed out last night. Hey, Raul, you, hey got the, you got the first match out of the way. You got the jitters out of the way. How's your team feeling tonight? Well, um, it was a really um, a pretty rough thing for last night, but um, I think today we woke up and um, I think um, a lot of our guys are feeling a little bit more confident from yesterday's loss, right? We, we have, it's like, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a bad, it's a learning, right? The last night loss was a learning for us. Good. So what did you learn? What specifically did you guys find that were the key points to improve on? Yes, um, we were not prepared for, from some actions from, from the teams. Um, so the, uh, um, the aggress how they were aggressive in the defense, uh, playing defense style, it was really a surprise for us. And today we're trying to now, right, um, we're going to try to um, surprise our enemies, right? Um, putting, putting that um, aggr um, the aggressive tactics a little bit back, giving us more space to play. That's what happened to us last night. All right, Raul, any words for Simple Tangers before we start? Well, good luck, and I hope you guys enjoy the matches. Chase Smooth? Uh, no, we're ready to go. Let's, uh, let's hit the song. Let's go straight to the danger zone. Danger zone, here we go. All right, gentlemen, best of luck. We'll see you on the battlefield. Thanks. I went to the danger zone. <laughs> I had to, Randall. I had we, to. we need aviators whenever someone drops a danger zone line. We do, we do. We'll work on that. And a volleyball. And a volleyball. Uh, World of Warplanes aviators. Of course. We can get those. We can get those. As always, betting begins right now. Betting begins at the beginning of every single battle. If you're new to betting, you'll start with 10 points. If you have any questions about betting, our moderators in Twitch chat will help you out. And our social media correspondent, Dan Morris, will be taking care of the winners at the end of the night. You can check how you're doing on the leaderboards at WGLConnect.com. Now, one of the top performers will have an opportunity to receive a $50 gift code from our friends over at Jinx, where you can purchase some awesome prizes, such as this. Hatch is going to hats, bro. This is an awesome T-shirt. You can pick up one now by going to Jinx.com and clicking on the World of Tank section. Big I, shout out to Jinx. I, I want a Martyr She Wrote T-shirt. A Martyr She Wrote? Yeah. That used to be a clan, and it was a good clan for a while. Oh, well, I'll have to talk to my buddy Hunter, see if we can design clan, something. A Martyr She Wrote. And they, <laughs> they, they have all the artwork already made. Yeah. They did everything you need. Just go talk to the goons. The goons? The goons. The goons? All yeah. right. All right. Uh, taking a look a little bit deeper into these two teams here. Timed out last night. Had a tough time. They went down 5-1 to one against uh, Penguin Mafia. But as Raul said, and as you mentioned, uh, or asked him at least, that you have to learn from your mistakes. You have to learn of what went wrong. And I'm sure that timed out took it very seriously. This is a team that has a great professional um, outlook when it comes to how they view themselves. The pride of Brazil is behind them. Yeah, Simple I, Tanker is the same way, though. Yes, but I liked the fact that I got to ask Raul about that. Yeah. Because it's not what we get to identify, it's what they get to identify as their problems and then try to fix. They were not ready for the style of which that they were attacked when they were on defense, and they were not prepared for defenders to actually attack. Which, I think the second one was something that was a, a, a rather big thing to overlook, because defenders will attack sometimes. The other one, I think, I think that was one little thing that those little strategies, those little moves that your opponent made, they were prepared for very specific situations, but they weren't ready for to, to improvise. Yeah, and you have to acclimate yourselves to what your opponent's going to bring on the battlefield in a matter of seconds. That is how quickly some of these decisions are made in order to adapt, and I believe that timed out is going to get better throughout the entire Well, all these teams are going to get better throughout the entire season, but they're a team that's very, very committed. Let's take a look at the rosters for these two teams. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of familiar faces coming from Simple Tankers, such as Jay Smooth, Tofu Smurf, Angry White Guy, Zach Coom, uh, Pub Whisper, Wallhacks is there as well. But Craft Lawrence, someone we haven't seen much, and Ruthven Nine Fingers is actually Ruthven Carlisle, but he lost a finger, so now he's Ruthven Nine Fingers. Oh, that's terrible to hear that he lost a finger. Uh, he now plays with a, a trackball. Is that what it is? One okay, of those? sure. Yeah. We got Gandorfo, Matt Knight, Raul. You saw Nip 100 and some other great players as well on Timed Out. Let's go ahead and check out the tanks for battle number one between Timed Out and Simple Tankers playing on Ruinberg. Looks like we've got two 5100s, two IS-3s, two RU-251s, and a T-37 for Simple Tankers. They're the red team defending. Timed Out will be attacking this time. They will be blue, and they will have two 5100s 
two IS-3s, an IS-6, an RU-251, and a T-37. Both teams opting for my favorite light tank at Tier 6 right now and bringing an IS-6, which I'm not going to hate on for this map, but I'm wondering if it's specific to any role here, if they're going to put it somewhere in particular. I'm, I'm waiting for that. And we'll define out the positioning coming from both teams here. We'll see the blue team timed out the defenders. One shot from NIP-100 firing towards Executus. And the trigger's being pulled to the tanks coming from Simple Tankers now on the flag cap. We noticed this during the qualifiers. Simple Tankers fought their way back into the Gold League where they were putting a lot of pressure on the flag caps, but unfortunately taking too much damage because of it. Now, the answer to that is timed out moving all of their tanks over in the northern section down to the south and simple tankers is looking for a setup to punish the movement coming from timed out yeah and as they get into position to simple tankers and timed out they will be fighting soon game over and raul will overmatch zakum but we now see unknown one getting on the cap and this is like we pointed out in previous matches with simple tankers that we've seen they put so much pressure on the cap. They place so much importance on that position and on that pressure that it could be too much and they end up exposing a lot of their tanks. Now Pub Whisperer and Jay Smooth are able to take out Daniel. And that was quick. 13 seconds left. A reset has to happen coming from timed out. They fire, they get it. Unknown one takes significant damage from the IS-3s and one shot coming I believe from Enrique Dante. Matt Knight gets answered in the RU-251. That's some long, long range fire coming from Pub Whisperer. It's a solid position. This is similar to what we saw from Blue, uh, Blue Boys in the sit match yesterday. 11 seconds left. Another reset will happen here coming from timed out. Well, actually shot into the dirt. Five seconds left. They still need to reset. Dodging Wait. back and forth. Oh, there is a reset. We're almost down to two seconds. Yep. Tofu Smurf fires back, takes down Matt Knight. More fire continues to trade back and forth. Nip 100 is very low. Executus getting closer to Gandorfo. But Unknown One and Kraft Lawrence have to pull back here. Both way, way down in HP. And Gandorfo falls. All right, now Executus doing a brilliant job at blocking Gandorfo so that he cannot back up. Right now, it's looking like simple tankers, especially after the Nip 100 kill. Three tanks against five. And I've, even with the exposed positions that we saw Kraft Lawrence and Unknown one in, it, it worked out. The cover fire from Simple Tankers is doing a great, great job at covering absolutely everything and punishing any kind of aggression. Ricky Dante pulling back away from Pub Whisperer. Zach Coombe around the corner is going to dance back and forth, trying to stop Game Over from engaging in this position against Pub Whisperer. On the chase, Pub wants his kill against a 5100. A shot from his teammate. Executus gets a hit against Enrique Dante. A uh, shot is absorbed into the tracks, it looks like, from Enrique. Pub Whisperer lands a hit. One more shot, Executus gets it, and Zach Coombe is able to keep the engagement on Game Over as Raul in Game Over. The last tank's alive for Timed Out, and the push for Simple Tankers will clean this up. All right, this is a solid move from Simple Tankers. Good opener. Few things here and there that probably could have been better, but it ends up getting them victory against their opponent. Yeah. The movement coming from timed out was fine. Them getting into the Delta Village was fine. But after that, they started to take hits here, hits there, focusing on the reset. And when you have an enemy team focus into one position, it allows for more flexibility on the outside. And that's what we saw from Simple Tankers. I think what we saw from timed out was them discovering the layout of their opponent only by taking hits. So every time they pop their head up, Mallet comes down and they find out, ow, that's not a good idea. They didn't do much aside from take cover from those positions and attempt to work with it. They didn't They didn't take control of the zero line like they needed to. Who was that? That was Pub Whisperer. Pub Whisperer's position was such that they needed to rush him with some light tanks, send your, send your little RU down there, cover it with the IS-3 and 5100, take it, and then just like with Simp, once you control that position, you can defend. Your opponent no longer has the crossfires necessary to keep punishing you and stay safe. That's what they needed to do. The F Crossroads has been such a linchpin at the beginning of these series that we've seen on Ruhlenberg, at least from last night and from the qualifiers as well. And a lot of these teams focus, uh, which is fine in that section, but that's where it starts to lead into these pushes coming from the one line and then moving up towards... Uh, it kind of a, uh, it's almost like a flank counter flank into the northern village rather than the delta village. Mm -hmm. But uh, I always look forward to what's going to happen on the third or fourth battle on this map 
of teams getting away from the F crossroads. When they start to get used to each other, they start to expect each other's strategies, and then they decide to begin playing that that yeah. next level. Where it's, what, it, I'm going to bring this strat to counter this strat I expect you to bring, and I'm going to continue going up and up and up, and I'm going to try best strategy after best strategy after best strategy for each counter. Yeah. And I'll highlight on the minimap once the battle loads of what we mean by the F crossroads, you'll see a grid on the minimap of A through K, and then 1 through 0, and that's how we detail what position these tankers are in. And uh, battle's almost loaded here, Randall, so let's go ahead and jump into battle number two between these two teams. What do we have for tanks? All right, looks like simple tankers. We'll be bringing two 5100s, two IS-3s, two RU-251s, and a T-37, much as what they brought last time. This time, it looks like timed out. Actually, he's going to stay with the same thing. Two 5100s, two IS-3s, an IS-6, RU-251, and a T-37. So as I mentioned for the minimap, as we jump on to... I'll be able to show you guys in just a moment. I think Kraft, yeah. Lawrence, and Executives will be heading just that way. Yep. And we'll be able to highlight exactly what Josh is talking about in a moment. Well, you'll notice the grid pattern A through K, 1 through 0. And we call it the F crossroads because there's a bit of a peak right into the F E line or the Foxtrot Echo line. Mm -hmm. And, and right, that's where they're passing right, right now. Yeah, And it's very exposed. It's an uphill route, meaning that Kraft, Lawrence will take a shell because he's a very easy target. Not only is it T-37 and a nice big light tank, tall and fat, but on a pedestal, just waiting to be shot, an easy target, and so they get it. This is a different situation now. We're looking at a bunch of heavy tanks in the west, very confusing for me. They're not in the fight, but with Daniel down... Again, <laughs> Jay Smooth takes down Daniel. Uh, that's... okay, cool. <laughs> I think Elton John wrote a song about that. As the rest of the blue team's gonna move to the south, most of them will hug towards the F crossroads, but two of the heavy tanks will move down the zero line. This is more of a, a fame coming from simple tankers. This is just weird. This is such head games that they're doing right now. They're expecting their opponent to not have set up to the south. They expected their opponent to set up for the north uh, fast cap, maybe? Oh, okay, that's it. This is complete head game strat right here yeah. from simple tankers. Well, th they're looking for the IS-3s to cross which Game Over might do in just a second along with Raul. And he's going to cross an unknown one, and his battle buddy are open if they turn the corner, but not yet. Jay Smooth and unknown one, they're waiting for it, and they go. Here's the peak. Oh, look, surprise, BR Game Over is exposed. <laughs> yeah, there's two shots, 724 damage against him. But he does make the right move, he moves forward. Yep. Doesn't have a lot of options, but that's... That's the one. And Zakum gets punished a little bit by BR and Raul, and some shots are trading back and forth between Unknown One and Jay Smooth. Raul turns his tank to the right and with a nice angle, and BR is down to five hit points. Zakum could close this up in a cinch. Uh, Raul Kinch trying to guard against Unknown One and Jay Smooth. One more shot to take down, game over. But look uh, at Matt Knight. Look at Matt Knight. This is what I was talking about last battle. He needs to be in this zero line position and get the cover. This is the point where Timed Out can try to bring this back. That high ground. He just has to stay alive. That's all he has to do. Enrique Dante and Gandorfo in a tough spot. Kraft Lawrence is very low as well. Tofu Smurf. He has not been hit at all in his 5100. And Gandorfo actually pushes in and is able to land one shot. Unknown one takes down BR. Finally. Unknown one gets hit to the side of Raul. Raul. Still has not taken any damage, and Enrique Dante, very, very low, 27 hit points, still able to rock a couple shots towards the F crossroads here. Raul is very cut off. That's the problem he has right now. No real support can can happen. Timed out, their 250-100s are elsewhere on the map. They need to bring support in, and Raul needs to get to a safe position, but he is not in a position that can retreat. He doesn't have a fallback. He doesn't have real cover, and he's probably going to go down right there with Jason. There goes Raul, Zakum. And Tofu Smurf pushing up from the flag cap area while their two teammates are still at the F crossroads. It's Unknown One and J Smooth in the 5100. Unknown One, he is in the IS-3. Enrique Dante in the 5100, still at 27 hit points. Here comes Tofu Smurf from behind. Lines up the shot, gets the kill. One tank remains. Gandorfo. Pub Whisper pushes up in the RU-251. One shot on the move. Lines up a second shot, Gandorfo can't get the kill. Bob Whisper pushes in and he gets it, and that's it. Simple Tankers takes another battle victory in this series. Like I said at the very beginning, head games. That's all it was. Crazy, crazy head games. They said, all right, we've attacked the south and we've succeeded. Now our opponent is going to expect us to do something that we've done before. And now rush the north cap. 
which we've seen in the past. They set this up, which is, uh, I, I'll say brilliant for this, but maybe in a week or two, this won't work at all. And that beautiful bounce, also oh. off unknown one there. Very, very lucky, I think, because the high ground from the IS-6, nice little shot, makes the angle on the front slope a little easier, but when you hit the, uh, the right side of the Shuka, not so good. Anyway, that spot worked so, so well because of the way they predicted their opponent would react. They knew exactly what was going to happen, and they, they created a perfect counter for it. If they had not, sorry. No, it's fine. If they had not, you would have probably seen simple tankers lose the tanks in the south, those mm -hmm. light tanks, and it wouldn't have been a very good game for them. We also look at the positioning of those two tanks from Unknown 1 and J-Smooth. They are so to each other, yet they both have aggressive stances to fire in that particular direction, mm -hmm. but they're not blocking each other's escape route, right? Sometimes tanks will come behind, and if you try to angle your armor in a certain way, you'll back into a friendly tank, and then you'll take another shot of damage. You're going, oh, oh my gosh, yeah. I got to shimmy back, and then everyone, you're Everyone, everyone you're, you're, in tanks knows yeah. that. Yeah. Everyone in tanks has experienced that situation, and we've all felt that. I know that feeling. You guys all know that, too. Yeah. It's, 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 it's really scary, too, because you... You poke out for a sec, you land a shot, and then you try to move back, and you're blocked, and you're like, no, no, and you start to freak out, yeah. and you keep Why won't I go backwards? banging on the keyboard. Yeah. And that's when you realize forward is the best direction. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the next battle. What do we have for tanks? Looks like two 5100s, two IS-3s, RU-251, ooh, D-54 Lightweight by Pub Whisper, and Kraft Lawrence will have a T-37. They will now be defending, actually, guys. Don't forget, everyone has switched sides, so Simple Tankers is now blue. Timed Out is now red. Timed Out will be bringing two 5100s, two IS-3s, two RU-251s, and an AMX-12T. Really don't get it. I'm such a fanboy for the T-37 that bringing something like a 12T just seems weird to me. These teams are bringing it for a reason. Let's see how Daniel's going to perform and hopefully not be the first death for Timed Out. That's happened twice so far. Looking at the opening run, this is some serious aggression coming from time down as they get to the northern cap. I like that. Craft Lawrence, this is a good solution to a problem which has plagued people for a while, which it's, is how do you scout that western approach? Look and at this opening. Look at this opening, though. Matt Knight gets hit, and Nip 100 fires back against Unknown One, and they make it to cover. All right, now Unknown One is exposed to the RUs. They need support. Someone needs to come in here and help them out because he will get taken down eventually. And Unknown One fires a shot into Nip 100, and Matt Knight still trying to hug that northern village. A couple more shots coming in towards the red team, and Simple Tankers is adjusting. Two tanks still further away, not in the engagement yet, and there goes Nip 100 yep. from Unknown One. But Unknown One will go down. Matt Knight gets that last shell in there. The IS-3 just not able to deal with that. Zach Coombe gets the next kill. Pub Whisper and Executus taking the long way around along with the third tank, Kraft Lawrence, that T-37. They need to get a reset here soon. 18 seconds left. It's okay. I think Executus will get there in time. And as he gets just around the corner, he slows himself down, actually, for a moment. There it is. Begins to zero. Needs to focus on the right target and... Gets the track it. shot. It's still a reset, though. However, those tanks will continue to pressure Simple Tankers to continue those resets here as they move around the corner. One tank has fallen for Simple Tankers. Two tanks down for timed out. Another shot comes in. 18 seconds still on the reset. Pub Whisper fires across, but Tofu Smurf gets the kill against Matt Knight. Enrique Dante takes a hit for 318, but returns fire against Kraft Lawrence. Zach Coom pushing up uncontested. Can now aggress against the IS-3. Game over. Needs uh -huh. to land a shot here. Seven seconds left. Oh, but look at this blocking. Daniel, ah, there, there it is, right there. Shot snakes just in as Gandorfo is blocking beautifully to stop executives. That was close, very, very close. But unfortunately, they went all in on this flag cap and they're starting to fall apart here as the reset timer goes back to 31 seconds. And there goes Gandorfo, Zach Coom gets the kill. Pub Whisper dancing back and forth in the T-54. Lands another shot against Daniel. Zach Coom will be loaded in time to get the shot on the side. And uh, it's Pub Whisper actually that gets it. It's Enrique Dante now and BR game over. BR takes a big shot on the side for 394. Kraft Lawrence in the T-37. Maybe he could get a kill here. Fires for a little bit of damage against Enrique Dante. BR game over. Hits Pub Whisper for 401. He goes down. One tank remains for timed out. Kraft Lawrence wants it. Kraft Lawrence wants it in the T-37, and he gets it. There we go. And that's three wins for Simple Tankers as we move on to battle number four hmm. on Ruinberg. I can definitely appreciate the aggression coming from timed out and also moving past the flag. 
into the northern section, but unfortunately, I know one of them was in a prime position that IS3, though. Yeah, he just was. Everything worked out pretty well. The T54 lightweight was a decent choice. I don't know what it does especially well that these teams are bringing in. it. For the individual eight. shots, it hits pretty hard, yeah. Pen's pretty good on the gun. But what is it about it that really helps? Because the armor is not sufficient to really bounce shells. You're not going to be bouncing 5,100 shells often. You're not going to be bouncing IS-3s. You're not going to be bouncing much of anything. I, I'm, I'm wondering why not an RU? Why not that? It could be personal preference. Well, it's technically a, a smaller profile in its length, but... L lower it's profile, it's got the slopey armor, so I guess you get those auto bounces sometimes. Hmm. We'll have Thanks. to look at the, a lot of the hard stats and see I've, how it's going to compare yeah, uh, I, with the 251 or even, I mean, T49, but mm -hmm. like, well, I mean, it's a fast firing tank, not yeah. the T49, the T37. Yeah. Well, okay. So when I went to the test server when they were first releasing all of these new light tanks, I went and unlocked them all. I said, okay, what does each of these do really well? And, and when I go to the test server and I do this, I don't start immediately by putting everything awesome on my tank. I don't upgrade it all the way. I went through the progressions of each tank. And it, it really felt like the RU-251 was just a better tank all around for its tier and just was more flexible. I'm not sure what the T-54 brings that, that really makes it shine. You mean T-37? Or the T-54 T lightweight. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Uh, almost, also the AMX mm -hmm. um, that was used in the last... Oh, the 12T? Five, the 12T oh, okay. as well. Well, we wanted to see what type of strategy these professional teams were going to bring here as we study some of the data and stats of their performance. Uh, because there's also, you know, the soft stats we like to call it as well. And here we go. Battle number four between these two teams. It's Simple Tankers that's up 3-0 to zero against Timed Out. What do we have for tanks? Looks like 250-100s, two IS-3s, RU-251, T-54 Lightweight, and a T-37 for Simple Tankers, the Defenders. Spawning in the west, the red team, Timed Out, will bring two 1390s, Four RU-251s and an IMX-12T. If this isn't a blitz strat, I don't know what is. Shots fired, 368 damage into, looks like, Endorfo. And here they come right past the F crossroads, and they're going to engage past the flag cap. Nip 100, Gandorfo and Matt Knight, along with Raul. Looks like they're heading a little bit towards the northern section past the flag cap, while Daniel in the back of the IMX-12T will yeah. stick on the flag cap as they engage against Executus. Hit for 535 in that total volley. Jace Move gets hit. And Executus is going to be overwhelmed, along with Jay Smooth from timed out. Returning fire here. Gandorfo and Raul take some shots. So that's two down already for Simple Tankers. All the tanks still left alive here for timed out. Zach Coombe, the next target, along with Tofu Smurf. As they try to return fire, Gandorfo is low. The AMX 5100 is trying to time their shots well on targets that are low. But Tofu could go down from Nip 100. Nip 100 lands the shot, and that's three down for Simple Tankers. Timed out, finally loses a tank, and two. Gandorfo and game over. Enrique Dante still very low in the 1390. And this is where it gets dicey because those auto loaders are going to be out of shells pretty soon here, Randall. But and these the consistent RUs, fire tanks. The RUs are amazing consistent fire tanks. And just with those, they're going to be ripping these guys apart. IS-3, yes, some of these heat shells will bounce because of the armor, but Craft Lawrence is actually doing a pretty good job with Pub Whisperer. And Pub Whisperer is able to land that shot further away. There goes Craft Lawrence, unknown one still alive in the IS-3. Pub Whisperer takes down Nip. Raul's going to push up in the RU-251, going to stop the T-54. And unknown one takes down Daniel. It's two against two. They've evened this up, and the T-54 is going to continue to fire against Raul. Unknown one's going to get hit from Matt Knight. One more shot, and Pub Whisperer does it. Unknown one and Pub Whisperer, it's now two to one against Matt Knight here from time down. All right, I was asking this question a moment ago. What is this T-54 good for? That's it. That's what it's good for. This is where it shines. I saw those shots on the move. I saw bounces, heat shells from the RU actually not penning. That's it. This is why the team Crash is here. Crash and burn! Pub Whisper gets it. Unknown one was there to back him up. Simple Tankers clean sweeps the map. 4-0, one battle away from taking the series. They have definitely improved in their brawls. Yes, absolutely. I, Pub Whisper, uh, post-game stats for me. Come on. What did he do? Pub Whisper, in his T-54 lightweight, 8 for 8 in penetrating shots and direct hits out of 10 shots, or 8 for 10. Damage, 1630. Second damage dealer. Top damage de dealer, unknown one, 5 for 6 in the IS-3, 1729. Now, I want to look at how this was perf uh, performance based on the autoloaders and the RU-251s. Matt Knight, NIP-100, very significant damage from them. But look at the 1390s further down, and this is where it gets dicey for uh, timed out. 
Game over. Three for four, and even some allied damage oh, for 255. One of those shells. BR game over somewhere in this brawl, which was crazy. Timed out players swarming everywhere all over where Jay Smooth was. I can understand that team damage happening. It sucks that it did, though. Really yeah. does. Well, and you got to move on from here. You got to shake it off and you got to move on. But I, again, really applaud Time Out for trying to move into this position. But it is really, really hard in the Delta Village to pick a prominent approach, uh, an approach where you have the advantage, especially when your team has slightly higher ground and your team, is, your enemy team is um, a little bit more stationary within the Delta Village from the northern spot. You're also assaulting a force with more hit points, yeah. with bigger guns, and with armor that is actually effective to stop your R2, RU-251s. The RU-251 has an AP shell, a heat shell, and a an HE shell, but I don't think it's actually Hesh, but a lot of people do. Uh, at least, if, if I remember correctly from the naming of the shell, it's not actually Hesh. It just has insane penetration. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have the HE on that tank for fighting lights, it's less consistent. HE can do pretty well against light tanks. Great pen, 100 millimeters about. And against most light tanks, that's, that's more than enough to pen, even a T-54 lightweight. HE, oh, sorry, heat shells are effective against a lot of tanks. They pen really well, but against an IS-3, that's not going to work. Even against a 5100 tracks, going to fizzle. Yeah. yeah. And it was this, the, the stoic IS-3s that were holding against mm -hmm. those tanks that were advancing, but... It, it, it was close, really, really close. Simple Tankers was down at first, but once those 1390s were out of shells, those IS-3s that continue fire, and that AMX was a top performer yeah. as well. Great to see. Anyway, here we go. Battle number five, Murovanka, and timed out is on the defense. Simple Tankers on the attack. What do we have for tanks? On the defense, timed out will be bringing a Pershing 1390, three RU-251s, a T-54 lightweight, and a 5916, so I guess they're uh, converting to the T-54 lightweight club. And Simple Tankers, who will be attacking, IS-3, T-32, another T-32, three RU-251s, and a 5916. So if we remember last time we saw Simple Tankers play, they brought that T-32 group, and then they had the RU-251s. Quick Let's update for everybody real up. quick. Simp is up three to one right now against top tier. Mm, nice. Although it is interesting top tier doing well enough to pick one off of them. All right, but back to the game real quick. We have Daniel in the 5916 way to the south. There's a hit squad of RU251s. Pub Whisper leading the way, Executus with him. Tofu and Kraft Lawrence following up. And once they find him, I'm, I'm worried. Although I'm still worried about simple tankers because all of their heavy tanks are on the opposite side of the map where they could be overmatched and that could be where simple tankers loses this one. Well, Gandorfo is now pushing up to try to join Nip 100. He's going to find Zakum right above. And here's the potential overmatch from timed out. Five against three. And Angry White Guy is going to be zoned and destroyed first. Gandorfo gets that kill. All right, now we have the light tanks from Simple Tankers moving in. They are trying to get there as quickly as possible. Tofu is on the way. Everyone else is coming in, but it's at least 20 to 30 seconds before we have the rest of Simple Tankers joining this huge overmatch. I think Pop Whisper just shot his own teammate. We'll have to check the stats after this. Sakum is going to fall back in the IS-3. And this is that moment when Simple Tankers is split up and they get picked apart. Uh, Pop Whisper is at about 75% health. Tofu Smurfs up top trying to take down Raul. What's left of them, they get it. And Kraft Lawrence in the 5916 with a consistent fire is going to be face that, facing that T-54 lightweight. Uh, Executus in the RU-251. Around the corner could get one shot and a kill against Gandorfo. And his teammates, Tofu and Pub Whisper, focusing on Matt Knight, who's trying to fall back. Takes another hit from the RU-251. T-54 lightweight Gandorfo is low. And Executus can't get the killing blow, but Pub Whisper takes down Matt Knight. Ah, there we go. Now we got Pub and Tofu together against Enrique Dante. There shouldn't be enough damage from Enrique to finish both of them off, but he will do significant damage before going down. Kraft Lawrence at 59-16 falls from Gandorfo. Enrique Dante takes down Tofu Smurf, or excuse me, Tofu Smurf takes down Enrique Dante. Executus trying to bug out away from a Gandorfo in BR game over. Gandorfo one shot away. The RU-251 is going to be loaded, and he gets the kill. One tank remains for timed out. Pub Whisper moving in around the corner. Fires on the move and misses, but he drifts a little bit with his braking mechanics. 
And he lines up the shot, doesn't get the kill, but Executus goes for the ram damage and the shot, and he gets it. Simple Tankers takes the series 5-0 to zero against Time Down. Well, that was that was a clean sweep. That was, was. good from Simple Tankers. I, I thought that maybe we'd see Time Down after their loss yesterday, noting their, their places to improve, would come out and maybe pick one off. But Simple Tankers, strong strats, even when it was getting a little dicey, it was it was still good. Yep. Their their ability to respond in that last battle, just in time. It was it was close, but they did manage to do it. And that now was the impressive. The responses have been very good. Now again, this is up against a team that is new to the gold league, and if when you look at the amount of matches civil tankers has had, the amount of times that you and I have broadcasted them, it's hours upon hours upon hours of experience here on this stage, if you will, the internet stage, and also the live stage that we had at finals up against Timed Out, who. We've had members like Candorfo and uh, Nip100 and Matt Knight and Enrique Dante uh, join us in the past in yeah. different iterations of different teams. So they have experience as well. But Simple Tankers, this is a big improvement um, on coordination. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what team they're going up against, that coordination is very key. They, they definitely appear to know exactly what they want to do and exactly how they want to go about solving problems. They've got the team set up. Everyone's got a battle buddy, it looks like. They've got the right tanks, I think. I feel like the tank choices are very intelligent and well-constructed to fit their needs. It, it seems like Simple Tankers is a, is a team that looks strong for this season. Very much so, but again, it's only the first battle. No, putting my bet down. <laughs> Simple Tankers, all the way. All right, well, well done to Simple Tankers and timed out. Um, I'm sure they're going to... Look back on these VODs, study up, improve. Their aggression is good. It's good that they're trying to dictate what's happening on the battlefield. They just have to go the extra mile now to, to improve and, and figure out what's really kind of going wrong for them. It, I think It's tactical things. Yeah. Little yeah. tactical things. Not individual play as much. They're doing a fine job there. Tactical things. Recognizing what they need to do to win to solve these problems of crossfires and very intricate details, things that are a little bit higher level than just simply going in and fighting your opponent. Yes. It's that. And we'll go back and study the VODs as well as we look at the broadcast and see exactly kind of what's going wrong for Timed Out. Um, because a lot of these brawls happen so fast, and, and you and I are trying to cover different areas of the map as well as we're flying around oh, yeah. <laughs> commentating at the same time. We're the cameramen as well, guys, so mm -hmm. it's always fun. All right, well, we're going to get ready for the final matchup tonight, and that's going to be the Cunninghams versus Penguin Mafia after this. You don't want to miss it.